Hey everyone! Today I want to show you how to make tileable textures in your modeling package. This is one of my favorite methods to make textures because it allows for perfect control of edges and shapes and angles, gradients. Uh, as an example, here's a roof tile texture that I made using this method as a base. And uh, so today I want to show you how to to make something like this. So you can use this technique to make all kinds of textures, uh, stone walls, brick walls, pavement, any sort of tileable texture that has like t pieces. So let's start in Maya by setting up our grid step. And in this case, I'm using Maya, but all everything that I'm going to do here is the same in Blender or 3ds Max. It doesn't really matter. It's more about the approach than the tool. Like you can get this exact same results using any modeling package. So I like to set my grid steps to 256 and then 64 subdivisions. So this makes sure that I'm always working on power of two grid steps and it helps to, to tile stuff and line up parts when you're working with modular pieces. Uh, so I really recommend to always work with the power of two steps. You can use two or some other one. Uh, sorry, you can use like 200 or some other grid step, but then you might get some weird seams here and there when you try to line up stuff later on. Okay, so let's start with a plane. This plane is gonna define our boundaries. So I just made sure that I placed the plane on the, on the grid steps and I have my UV editor open here and I'm just going to check if I'm looking at the right direction. So yeah, so if I select the top vertexes here, I see the top ones here. If I select left, I see left. So this just means that I'm looking this in the right direction. Uh, so to start, I'm going to create a simple stone slab, which is just going to be a rectangle two by one rectangle and making sure i have snap to grid on now i'm going to start laying this out and making sure i use snap to grid this line i'm going to offset so when you offset you have a gap and it, what matters here is that you just have one, one side of the gap you know, because when you tile this texture, which we're going to do later, this is going to cover that gap. Uh, so now let's select all the blocks, duplicate, and I go into my edit mode, and I and I move all the pivots to the same grid spot. So as you can see, they were all centered before, but now they are centered on the grid, snap to the grid somewhere. And now I can just duplicate these guys. And using the grid step to move, they're going to line up perfectly. Now, if I export this and try to bake, I'm not going to get any AO information because there is none. If I hide my lines, you can see there is no information here to bake whatsoever because this block is flat. But at least I have the layout in there. So now that I have this layout set up, I can go back to my block and add some angles. I'm just going to add a simple bevel here to show how it works. Select all the pieces, accept the plane, and I use this really cool script to replace objects that I'm sure Blender and, and Max is also have a similar one like this. It's a very simple functionality. I, I'm going to replace my laid out stones with the, with the new one. And if I do that right now, you see that I'm going to have a problem. They're moving positions. And that's because their pivot is different, right? Because we changed their pivots. So I select all the pieces and I hit my hotkey for center, pivot, 
to the center of the object. And now they all the pivots back to the center, which matches the original box there. Select all of them and replace, and now it works. So now if I bake, I'm going to get some nice highlights. Just so, as an example, I'm going to exaggerate the bevel more so we can see it well when we bake. So replace, and bam. It's very easy to iterate. Now that we have this, I want to see how it looks in Unreal. So let's export it. The first thing that you want to export is the plane. So make sure you, you move the plane on top of it because all the information is going to get projected onto this plane. And uh, go to export, export to FBX. And make sure you have the triangulate option on for X normal. And my X normal is set up to always use the same file names. So I don't have to reconfigure it every time. So I just have this temp folder. Uh, and I'm just going to replace this low poly here. And now if I export these pieces the way they are, I'm going to have a gap here, like I said before. So to fix the gap, it's very easy. Select all the pieces, duplicate, combine, so they become one object. And then you snap this object to the grid. You can even use a larger grid step so it's easier to move. And then you move it by exactly, let me get this guy out of the way, by the exact same size as the other one. So if you hold snap to grid and move, they're going to line up perfectly if you send, if you align the pivot before you moved. And you can tile on each direction and you see it just matches perfectly. So now we can export this. Go to X normal. So the way I set up my X normal, as I said, is like I always use the same file, so I don't have to change this. But I'm going to show you if it's the first time you're using X normal. So go to high definition meshes, click on clear all meshes, right click, add meshes, and then add your high poly FBX. And make sure you disable ignore per vertex color, because later on you might want to export vertex color so you can use that as a, as a mask or as a color variation there's so much you can do with vertex colors go to low definition meshes and do the same clear all meshes low poly on my baking options I, I saved my TGA to that temp folder so bakes, bake TGA I always use the same one I just overwrite I don't need to keep copies of this one so enable normal map and anti-aliasing anti, anti to 4. And now let's bake the map. So here's the result I got from X normal. Uh, it's pretty cool because I already I can see the gradients, the angles, all that stuff like very clearly. Like whatever I make there is whatever I get here. Like I like this control that I think is a little bit harder to have with substance. Uh, so let's close this and I'm going to import that normal map into Photoshop. So my big normals. And I'm going to show this on some other video later, but I have this PSD template that I use for every piece. And uh, I'm just going to place my normal here, save, and export. So if you, you're used to making normal maps for Unreal, you, you might have noticed that you have to flip the green channel. If you export it the way it is like this, the green channel is going to look inverted. If you go to channels and green, uh, Unreal uses the inverted green channel, so it would have to look like this. So the highlights come from the bottom in Unreal. And I don't really like working with normal maps this way, I just find it harder to see the information. So I work with the green channel up, and in my Expresso exporter I have this option here to flip Y, the Y channel, so it fixes that problem. So make sure you, you export with the correct orientation. 
So when I'm working on a texture, I like to preview it in the engine because it's so much easier to see your texture in, in the relation to others, you know, so you, you, you have to make sure the skill is correct and stuff. And I find it really hard to do that just by using, just by previewing on a cube or just in a simple sphere. I kind of need to have a space to play with. So here I, re I imported my textures and I apply them to a cube in a reel that I'm just duplicating around. And this allows me to kind of play around with it and get like different looks, you know, like you can do some quick geometry just to play around with it. See how it looks. So it already looks cool as a base. Uh, I'm going to go back to Maya now and add some variation for to make it more interesting. So if you're using ZBrush or any other sculpting tools, you could totally just export this slab here to, to ZBrush, import it back to Maya and then uh, simplify the, the geometry so you don't have too many triangles and then you can just replace and play around with it. Same same idea, but I'm going to skip that for now. I'm just going to make a quick variation here. I duplicated that guy and I'm going to play around with the edges. Very quick and dirty, just, just so you get the idea. And uh, as I said before, if you're, if you're working on a stylized project, you can really push the, the shapes. So you get like really cool angles and nice details. Now I can just replace that piece. Place it some places and then I rotate to make sure that I get different information. You can even uh, mirror so they don't look exactly the same. And um, let me just create another one. I'm going to keep this simple as an example, but feel free to play around with the shapes and experiment and see what you can come up with. You can add cuts, you, you can add uh, damage. And generally you don't need a lot of different variations. It, it, like sometimes four or five is enough for like a stone wall like this. Okay, that's okay for now. Let's put it back. And I'm going to play around with this scale. We got some extra variation. And if if you're working with a stylized project, you can have some stones that are overlapping each other. It looks really cool if you do that. You can break some lines to like you can offset some of the bricks a little, making sure you don't have gaps. And uh, make sure you also change the border stones so you don't have a clear, so you don't know where the, it's, it, it's, a, it's very jarring when you see a texture and you can see where it tiles. So don't forget to change the edges too. And play around with scale, angle. The sky is the limit. Okay, that should be cool for now. And you, you, you can even go into and change individual pieces. Okay, let's re-export re this. I'm going to hide the stones, hide this, and then use that same method that I used before, duplicating, combining, snap to grid, and tile. So as you can see, the texture tiles perfectly because we fixed the layout first, and we are always moving on, on grid steps. So you don't have to worry about the, the edges, you know, the texture is always going to tile. 
So export, and I'm going to rebake and import into Unreal. So here's my normal map. I used uh, this sweet action tools by Teddy from Quixel to quickly generate a cavi cavity and the ambient occlusion. And I set it to a low intensity because I don't want that to be too intense. And let's see how it looks like now in a real. So export and then re import. So as you can see, it looks pretty cool already. Like uh, it was very quick and easy to do. And now I can just go back to Maya and fix any problems and polish the texture and kind of just go from there. So here it is. I, th I hope you like this and you find this useful. And uh, please feel free to share any textures that you make using this method. See you next time. Bye bye. If you want to learn more about how to make textures in this style, take a look at my Gumroad page for my roof tiles tutorial. In this tutorial, I go over this entire workflow from start to finish, and I show you how to get extra variation and hand paint details and use photos to quickly finalize the texture and get a really nice style out of it. It's a one hour long, fully narrated, and it has a lot of really good tips.